Uh, Stanley Flexen here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined once again by the Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion, Chris Billum smith Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, very well, thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Um, probably not as good as you, considering the news we heard this week uh, that you'll be challenging for the vacant British and the European uh, championships in the summer in fight camp uh, against Tommy McCarthy, someone you've been targeting for a little while now. Um, how long have you known that that was on the cards? Uh, yeah, we've, we've been trying to make the fight. We knew sort of that was hopefully going to be my next fight uh, before the last one. And we knew he was going to be out in um, in April, May time. So, uh, yeah, so the, the fight's been been mooted for a while. And it's nice that it's uh, it's finally, you know, signed and, and um, on you know, it, it's happening in, in July at fight camp. It's a huge opportunity, not just to win the British, which you've been uh, mandatory for for some time, and the European, but also in terms of the world stage. I think he's rated a little bit above you in three of the major governing bodies. So you could be on the verge of a world title shot should you win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, you know, the, the main thing is winning winning the titles and the, the rankings, uh, they just come come with, with the wins, obviously. And, um, you know, after the last fight, it, We've got the ranking up a bit, and then this one's exactly the same. Um, so yeah, we're, that's what we're pushing towards. Um, I think I'm developing well in the gym, developing well as a fighter, and adding more to my game. And that's uh, that's the main thing. I think a lot of people think, you know, Tommy's talking about world titles um, or fighting for one. But um, I don't. When I fight for a world title, I don't just want to fight for it. I want to win it. So um, for me, I just. Uh, I'm looking at this fight and then still developing and, and maybe staying around European level rather than going straight into a world title fight because I'm, I'm aware that the development is such a crucial part of, um, of, of of a boxer's career. And like I said, when I'm at world level, when I'm fighting for world titles, I want to win it and I want to stay there. So um, I might even be able to win one in my next fight, but then it's the, the learning and, and the staying there, which is the the hard part and that, that for me is a, a big big focus of mine is keep developing every day um, as a fighter and over the next you know fight for a, a world title in 18 months to two years time or however it may be um, or like you know three three fights time or something like that rather than win this and go straight into it but yeah obviously I'll be in good rankings and look, be looking at eliminators and, and good fights to keep developing me as a fighter. As we've said, you've been wanting this fight with Tommy McCarthy for a little while. He seems to have his heart set on a world title fight. Now that appears to have changed. He seemed, and we'll talk about this in a minute, he seemed very enthusiastic about fighting you um, after his recent European title defence. What do you think changed from his point of view? Was it just realistically he wasn't going to get a world title shot anytime soon? I just think it was, I think his hand was forced, to be honest with you. Um, he, it was quite clear he didn't want to fight me. I was a step back and he wanted to fight for a world title and all these things. But I think he wasn't going to get those opportunities. Um, even after he signed, you know, signed, signed the fight, he said he didn't want to, he, he wanted a world title shot. But um, so, yeah, even then he, he still said he didn't, didn't really want to fight me or for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, like I think his hand was forced to be honest with you. And, and that's why, why the fight's happening. What, what did you make of the rest of his post-fight interview after beating Alexander Jure? It, it wasn't exactly flattering um, in his descriptions of yourself and your trainer. Yeah. Um, I sent one tweet out, obviously, last week because I was I was hearing that he was trying to avoid the fight and, and stuff. So I sent one tweet to get under his skin. Um, and that's worked. So I've got what I needed out of it. I've got the fight signed. Um and then he said, I, I need to stop talking about him. But every uh, every interview he's done, uh, it had my name in the title pretty much. So uh, that was that was funny. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, he's going to say what he's going to say. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes to fight night, it, that'll be it'll be both of us in there and the, the words will have stopped. And uh, yeah, and we can can just do what we're, we're paid to do. And that's that's entertaining. And, uh, put it all on the line. There's obviously a bit of um, shared history between him and your trainer, Shane McGuigan. Uh, has Shane spoken to you about that at all? Or, and could it be a benefit that he knows Tommy very well? Yeah, I mean, I think they were just on the high performance team in Ireland together. But 
people keep saying that they boxed as amateurs, but I think they sparred. But I don't. Pretty sure Shane was like a 69, 71, and Tommy was like a 81 kilo, 81, and, and and they sparred. So um, there's a few people putting, but I'm pretty sure Shane told me years ago that you know because obviously I'm a cruiserweight, and we spoke about the people in the division, and he said that he, you know oh yeah Tommy is I'd sparred Tommy years before and his good points and and his bad points etc. Um, and said that was it, and then yeah, but if if that's his is you know his route that he's trying to rile Shane up, then uh, even better for me because we'll, we'll work even harder in the gym and, and uh, make sure we're absolutely on, on point on, on the night. But no, there's a uh, there's no no feelings there from from Shane's point of view. It's, he hasn't really spoke about it um, or brought it up. It's just. Uh, He's mentioned it before that they'd sparred like years years ago, even when when I joined quite early on that they sparred. He'd mentioned it to me then, um, but yeah, and, and that's about it. What was your reaction, kind of live when you were watching the post fight interview? I was really enjoying it, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, I was I was, uh, I was at my mum's house with my, with my wife. Uh, we were watching it, and uh, yeah, it was it was quite funny because he was just the way he was. They just seemed very riled up about me um and that's all just from one tweet that's all it took um so yeah it, it was I, i'm just glad the fights happened and and that he's obviously going to be very motivated for the fight um so and you can't talk like that and and then pull out the fight so the fight's going to happen and, and that's all i ever wanted so uh, i'm i'm over the moon with with the reaction how happy are you, not just with this fight specifically, but with your career trajectory? Because since the narrow defeat to Richard Reactor, each fight, and obviously Vasil Duke was a, a last-minute replacement, but each fight seems to have brought you on and developed you, not just skill-wise, but in terms of your world ranking and so on as well. Yeah, um, as I spoke earlier, you know, my development is it's not just uh, the work gets done in the gym and the time I had out between the November 2019, the Craig Glover, Glover fight and the Nathan Dawley fight. I was sparring Maris Breedis for a couple of weeks and I was sparring uh, Lawrence Coley. So in that time, I was gaining invaluable experience um, as well. So that brought me on a huge amount and, and the development just keeps, you know, just, just keeps improving. And uh, for me, that's the, the most important thing about my career and, and that's how I've always been even as an amateur is just looking daily to improve and uh gaining those little percentages here and there and I think that's why with having Shane and the, and the team um you know behind me now I'm able to develop at a fast rate and obviously the rankings like I said come come with the wins and the performances so uh that is this you know nothing's really changed I've trained like I've said before in interviews that you're in this gym, you train, if you're fighting a four-rounder on your debut, you're training like a world champion and, and that hasn't changed. So uh, that's that's the way way it's done and, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Now, Lawrence aside, because he's your stable mate, has it been at all more challenging to get that kind of world-class sparring as you go up and up the ranks? Yeah, I mean, we've always struggled a little bit with, with some of the cruiserweights. Um, you know, I've sparred some of them a couple of times um but then when you you get to a level in britain as well like that they don't want to spar you because we could be fighting each other and stuff like that but um yeah i mean the the well we, we've had some some pretty good sparring there's some people you know some amateurs that that have sparred and stuff um and some people that are just turning over that have sparred so um but yeah that you know the, the lawrence sparring is invaluable i'm very fortunate to have that in the gym and i think having that in the gym and looking at his last performance and, and the level he's at and how he's progressed is, is great for me as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely difficult to get the, the, the world-class sparring in. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're happy with, with where we're at. It was, um, me and Lawrence are both orthodox and I think we've both got orthodox opponents next so we can use each other. Um, and then, you know, use each other's sparring partners as well. And talking of Lawrence, have you had a chance to read his book yet? No, I'm still waiting for him to give me one. He said he was going to give me one. I was like, have I got to order it or are you going to give one? He's like, no, I've got a couple. I've got a couple. I've seen him give Shane one yesterday. Um, but yeah, no, not yet. Um, I'm a fan of, um, I like to read. So uh, I'll be getting it at some point soon. It's very good. I really enjoyed it, actually. I didn't think I would. 
I was kind of a bit sceptical, but it's very good. Oh, good stuff. I won't spoil it for you, although you know he becomes a world champion at the end. So, uh, Not in the book he doesn't. That's no, not in the book, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about the gym, uh, it was reported earlier this week that you've got a new addition um, in Daniel Dubois, um, who we last saw um, suffering his first defeat, unfortunately for him, against Joe Joyce. Um, have you had a chance to meet him yet in the gym? Have you have you spoken to him? Um, he was in last week, as last time I saw him. But um, I, I thought he was just on a trial with Shane. Um, okay. And yeah, I don't I don't know what what's going on. To be honest with you, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think Shane mentioned him today, but I wasn't really listening. He was talking to someone else in the gym, and I heard his name. So yeah, no. Uh, I saw him last Friday and that, that was it. Do you have a preference in terms of kind of how busy the gym is and how filled with fires it is? Because you've been there when it's just been two or three. You've been there when it's been bustling. Do you have a preference? No. Um, you know, as long as as long as long each fighter, I mean, me personally, as long as I'm getting what I need from, from, from Shane and the team, then he could have 100 fighters as long as I'm still getting the same amount of attention and time on, on, on my training and my career. Um, but no, I mean, as long as, you know, Shane's obviously a friend of mine as well. So um, I want him to have, you know, good, great fighters in the gym and all the success as well. How does the atmosphere compare now to when you were first in the gym with, you know, George Groves and people like that? Is it is it kind of, because you're all kind of roughly the same level now or in or around? Yeah, it's um, it's different for me because I've sort of progressed through, through my career. You know, I, we've had world champions in the gym from the start. Um, and then I've sort of climbed up the levels and I was, you know, I was always the lowest because I was, the, you know, earliest on in my career. And now, like, like you said, we're all similar, similar levels, especially me and me and Fowler, you know, uh, boxing, um, you know, around that European level now. So, um, yeah, it's um, nothing's really changed. It's just, you know, like I said, we the, the training's exactly the same. Um, it's just nice to be involved in, in big fights and, and um have people talking about your fights in the gym rather than you, you know, beating a, a journeyman <laughs> like it was at the beginning. And uh, but no, it's um, it, it's it's nice to to be up at that level, and it's nice to see all the the work's paying off to to be at the same level as, as the other guys in the gym. And talking of big fights, I should ask you just before I let you go, um, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez for all the major belts at light welterweight or super lightweight. I've got to get used to that. Um, takes place this Saturday in Vegas. Uh, who do you see coming out on top there and, and what sort of fight do you expect? Uh, an exciting fight. I think hopefully, um, I, I, you know, Taylor is going to have to pick his moments, I think, because I've seen a little bit of Ramirez and what I have seen, he's very tough. Mm. Um, he's obviously a Mexican who are uh, renowned for being tough um, and, and he, he loves to fight. So I think Taylor's going to have to box and, um, be a bit of a boxer fighter in, in this fight and pick his moments but I think he'll come out on top uh, depending how tough Ramirez is um, Josh is such a sharp puncher uh, and he can punch in volume and he, and he can really whack especially in the small gloves um, so I think either uh, I think either Taylor late stoppage or, or on point just like I said depending how, how tough um, Ramirez is Good stuff I really, really appreciate your time. I'll let you um, get on the roads. Um, I'm sure you've got to get where you need to go, but appreciate it. And um, hopefully we'll have another chat before the big fight in the summer. Yeah. Nice.